next to the dock, you're going to have to kind of dog run it in. <coughs> so, as I've said before, we need to get the survey just to see what an 18 foot ramp would do to the current flow of traffic. Uh, That's what we're waiting on. Yeah, we're waiting on the survey. Yeah, uh, that really neat. And yeah. we can't do a 14 foot ramp. Uh, I'm sorry. Anyways, a 14 foot wide slab would be perfect in there. Well, he he has what he said to me is mm -hmm. he has 37 feet. Mm -hmm. An 18 foot slab and five feet dock is within his 37 feet. And I understand this issue about the willow tree, mm -hmm. but the willow tree, you know, is, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna, maybe we'll have a save the willow tree thing going. I'm not really sure if that'll happen or not, but <laughs> it could be the next step. Um, but that's all already is on the property that's owned by the road commission. So I'm just telling you, he's, he, I don't want to have us to go spend money to put another ramp in in, another, in 10 years. It, it shouldn't be happening. This so, one lasts 60 so far. I know. So that's what I'm saying. I don't want to, if, if this is a, a stress concrete slab, you know, we're going to have to look at what the Road Commission can do. And right now I know what he, where he's at is putting the dock beside the, the concrete slab. And as soon as we get the, um, the survey, we'll... It'll, we'll be able to actually see it in real life. And I think until we get that survey, this is all just conjecture of where everything's going to end up. I agree with you. Good. The, the other issue is that none of the drawings so far show what is going to be asphalted in that area. Oh, you mean in terms of in front of the ramp? In front of the I ramp. I didn't up, ask him up that. To the, uh, yeah, I didn't ask him what was going to be asphalted. I but I will ask him. That in the last few days, I so. will. Yep. Uh, okay. Any idea what they're going to do? Well, Brian Fulford is very backed up, and he's the guy doing the survey, and we have waited on him for several other surveys. So I know it's – he he had told me it was going to be two weeks at our last meeting, and he still doesn't have it. So Many, many people are very concerned that uh, when the ramp starts being redone, down, they're not going to be able to put the bolts in and out. Well, that's going to be, that's why we, we decided to delay it originally until sept, late September. So, I'm, you know, you can't, do, you can't make progress. What are we going to do at November when everybody's gone and we're almost between, uh, you know, spring. yeah, we're not going to wait for the spring. We're going to do it now. So, there are other boat ramps. There's lots of other boat ramps. And, you know, for the few no. days that it's going to take. I hate to disagree with you, but... Uh, there's one at Mount Lake Village, but uh, per, uh, some friends of mine just took their sailboat out well, there's one today, here, and they can't, they couldn't take it out in Mount Lake Village because it was too shallow. Uh -huh. But what about the Burt Lake one? There's one well, right at Burt Lake at, at uh, okay. the Indian River. It's a long ways to take the sailboat. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying that. Yeah, especially, a especially when you have to step the mast. But I keep we down. Yeah. yeah. Right. We'll do the best we can, but we're not going to wait. Mm -hmm. We, we got to get it done before. We, we need to advertise when that's going to be closed. Yeah, we will. We can get some in paper. Well, yeah. I would, once we get the survey and get things staked out, I would invite the water to come down and take a look at how things will work. Okay, because, fine. You, know, you can look at it on a piece of paper, but when you see it marked out on the board, it makes a big difference. <clears throat> I know you think there's 37 feet there, but it's 37 feet on an angle. Well, let's just wait for the survey. I mean, I, I think we've got to wait for the survey. This is it's, this is a road commission survey and a road commission project. And as soon as we get a chance to see the survey, we'll all be able to make a much more informed decision. And I thank the board for all of your consideration. Okay, great. Run agreement, Rachel? I uh, talked to Tim about the word private, and what he is saying is that would be a private person, um, party, whatever. However, we are not going to address in the rental agreement who would be renting the hall. That's a policy that we would need to write separately. 
as to who we would accept into an agreement for rental. You so mean that, like township? This is strictly a lease agreement. It has nothing to do with, and I misunderstood it, and I think we all did, yeah. that we were going to specify in this who we were going to rent to. It comes down to us writing a policy, somebody writing a policy of who we're going to rent to. Um, are we going to rent to the Qantas or whatever? But when we write a policy, it has to be even, Stephen, across the board. No matter who you rent to, you cannot discriminate. If Tupperware wants to rent, fine. If the ladies of Isabella want to come in, that's also fine. It can be 5013Cs, it can be commercial, whatever we decide. If we want to discriminate, which I wouldn't suggest, um, we can do that, but it has to be even across the board. So basically, this um, is, we would take out the educational services, which we talked about last time, and that would have to go into a, an agreement or a policy, um, which we would uh, write separately. Also, he brought up, I brought up the fact <laughs> that we were paying the constable, and um, the constable is a, an employee of the township, and the township carries more liability by hiring him than not. It should be an off-duty police officer, a sheriff, or a retired sheriff that doesn't work for us. We carry more liability having Pierre here than not having him. So we would need to go to somebody like Les Teagle or somebody that's not on the force anymore, or somebody that is. So who would change the pay constable to pay off-duty yeah, sheriff, off deputy duty, sheriff, de or off retired? Duty deputy sheriff, yeah. So okay. we're going to take that out. Okay. And add that to eight. And other than that, I think we're pretty much good to go. I'm going to sit down with him and um, he'll tell me if anything else. Um, oh, the one thing we did change in five was the lease agrees to clean Sad Hall after Lisey's use of same. Is that good with everybody? Clean, yeah. We just took out the provide custodial service. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, so everything else just stays the same. And um, this just is good to go. I'll have him get me a regular. Okay, I have copy. one question. Um, we got a letter from Carl, which um, he spoke about doing, I, I think, quite a bit of substantial research, which I was very impressed by, and regarding what other townships are doing. And he was talking about. Um, that a rental fee, and I know this was for certain people, like for-profit organizations, but a rental fee of $35 compared to other townships. If you looked at Benton's rental fee um, and their security deposit, I know we don't, do, do we, I guess we do have a security deposit, and then a rental fee of $50 with a uh, refundable deposit, I guess that was Benton and Grant was $40 with a $50 parking uh, refund. Security deposit. I mean, is our thirty-five dollars too low? I mean, compared to just those two, are fifteen dollars higher than we are? Well, I don't know. That's up to the board. Yeah. We've been at thirty-five. I know quite we had a, a discussion, but I, I yeah, just think we've been at thirty-five for quite a while. I just think we've got new information, and I, I was, you know, if you're reading everything he had, um, I'm just wondering if. One thing that somebody else mentioned to me, it just popped in, sorry, <laughs> um, was that if there was a township resident that was needing it in a hurry for a funeral dinner, could we possibly waive the fee for that? Does, and I think there again, it would have to be in the policy. When we visited this a while back, however many years it's been, uh, the rental agreement. I remember Tim using an example like uh, what want, maybe wanting to waive the fee for uh, 
a Boy Scout family trying to host a spaghetti dinner to, to earn money to go to you know camp. And he said you couldn't do that. Okay. Uh, because that, well, it's not treated I, I it's, That's right. Yeah, it's not treated. We want to be considerate of, of people. And, right. And, and somebody suggested to me, would you ask the question? So I'm asking the question. And I think that's why we set the fee. Even then, we knew $35 was a low price. But we set the fee low so we wouldn't be burdensome. But there's also in the stuff that Carl sent, and I agree, he did a lot of research. Um, other townships are charging different rates for different people. Right. They are charging for profit people substantially more money than they are charging the the uh, uh, constituents for personal use. Yeah, so and so and know, right? you know, we, our original policy that we adopted years ago was. If you're for profit, you don't get to use this. Yeah, I remember that. No Tupperware people, uh, you know, no uh, magazine sales people, and probably, you know, that should include no for profit educational type classes. So, but I'm, I guess I'm okay with with that if a township resident doesn't want it for that particular weekend for, you know, a, a funeral or something like that. But I think it should be a different fee. I don't think we should be subsidizing somebody that's using uh, a taxpayer asset to, uh, you know, make make money. I run it by him again, but as I understood from him, that that is legal and we really cannot discriminate. That's what I would think too. I, I, was I, I don't think we can discriminate against. And I said to him, because I always thought, like you, when we went through this five or six years ago, we didn't think that we could do that. Well, it is legal to rent to for profit organizations. It is legal. Well, and I don't think do that we can. Discriminate. I think it has to be across the board. Everybody the same. Well, I, there's other townships in the well, county that I, are doing. I, I, yeah, I don't know what they're doing or who they've they consulted legally okay. for that. That's my problem with that. Could that be a question to Tim then? If sure. they made two thousand dollars, why can't we, we have ten percent of that, two hundred dollars? Because they, it's for yeah. profit. Yeah. Yeah, but in, uh, the people that are here for graduation stuff, that's not for. That would have right. to, there again. We would have to write a policy that says, okay, this is something, you know, mm -hmm. out of the ordinary or whatever. But my question about the funeral, let's go back to that. Okay, is there any way, and I'll have to ask him, that we can waive the fee? I mean, I think the last thing you want to ask the people is, can you bring your insurance in? Father has just died. And do you want to ask them to bring their house insurance and sign legal papers and all that? You talk to him about it. I, I'm just remembering. Well, I mean, I have to. I'm, rem I'm remembering. That's the way of the world. I'm remembering the, the Boy Scout yeah. benefit. Yeah. 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 I just said I'm okay with you discussing that with him, but I'm remembering his answer for the Boy yeah. Scout benefit dinner because okay. that was something that okay. was well, we was actually we on the table fine. then. Well, you, you start getting to where we draw the line. Yeah, I understand. I, I say we set a, a rate in the rental so or whatever. So we want to stay. At, I think the question was, do we want to stay at thirty-five dollars or do we want to up to thirty-five dollars? Yeah, I think it's a low rate for all. It's really a low rate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nowadays, would anybody want to raise it to fifty dollars? I mean, which seems to be the more common. What have you got over there? I read that, but it was quite well. He said it was. Bull Grand is fifty dollars. Or Benton is $50, I'm sorry, and Grant is $40, but a $50 security deposit. And was it Inverness 45. 50 <laughs> In Inverness, I don't, um, I don't know what Inverness is. Yeah, many, many, of the, many, of them, uh, many of them are $70. That seems to be the going rate right now because I've checked for other family functions, and we were half the rate of most townships. And as far as the funeral thing there, I think that may be why Benton Township charges $10 for funerals or memorial services so that they can't say that it's free 
but you know, ten dollars is such a nominal charge. Well, it says there's a fee of ten dollars with a fifty dollar refund deposit for funerals and memorial gatherings, with the total cost of sixty dollars. That's what you have. Yeah, but the deposit is refundable. I know, I've got it. Ten dollar funeral fee. But I. I would be I would be rather forgetting the deposit stuff. I'd forget the deposit and I would just go, go flat with the fee. Flat Let's fee. make it simple. The fifty dollar deposit isn't going to get you anywhere no. anyway. They exactly take eight tables out of here. It's still way down. <laughs> so I mean, what do you feel, John? I like the low rate. I'm in favor of keeping it as a low rate. Okay. Fifty is too much, then. Yeah, but there's the taxpayers built this building, and they ought to be able to use it as taxpayers. And I don't think we should be dipping into them for fifty bucks or anything like that. Graduation parties, all of that stuff, gatherings, baby showers. I think thirty-five bucks to rent the hall for that is a reasonable price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not here to make money. Right. Well, we, well be nice nice to, it would be nice to have the lights on and the heat. Yeah, yeah, it'd be, yeah, it'd be yeah, nice I to understand have the heat yeah, going. I understand you shovel in the wash. You've you yeah. got someone cleaning bathrooms afterwards and cleaning kitchens. Yeah. You have to at least break even. Yeah, yeah that there's is. a lot more behind it besides just you like to give it away. Yeah. Well, do we have a motion uh, to, to change? I, I don't know where you can rent usually for thirty-five dollars anymore. Do we have a motion to change it, or do you want to keep it where it is? No, I'd, I'd stay with 35. I think we're in the business of offering something for your tax dollar. And I'm going to take the position that I'm okay with raising it a little bit. Kathy, where are you? I'm okay with raising it somewhat. So I wouldn't go over 50, but I, I, I would settle. 40, 45? Mm -hmm. Well, if we're going to change it, we need a motion to change it. Mm -hmm. Who's going to make it? I'll make the motion to have the hall rental at 45. Okay, is there a second? I'll support that. Okay, all in favor of the motion of the hall rental going to $45? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Okay, the, the ayes have it. The ayes. Four, have it. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else on the rental agreement then? Uh, I no, think that, that was basically. I wanted to explain where Tim was coming from, and we, you know, we got into this big discussion about who could, who couldn't, and what the price would be, and all that. That has to be in a written policy. No, it was for profit. Uh, yeah, we would have to. That's a separate document completely as to who we would want. To rent to, and I'll be talking. I'll get back to him on this. Can Tim do a, a draft of a policy document for us? And we're oh, I'm sure he can. Sure. Or well, MTA I mean, might have one that we could look at too. So you, right now, your interpretation, based on your conversation with Tim, is that we should not or cannot charge um, a commercial rate versus. A resident rate. That's how I understood it, but I'll be happy to check it. I'll have uh, I'll go back and talk about it. Okay, I'm. Yeah. But he also said if we did that, you we couldn't put it in this document. No, no, that would that, have to that, be in, in the policy. Agreement. Okay. Well, the so would the 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 rate would be in the policy document, mm -hmm. also it wouldn't be in this document. Well, I think for the private be. person, if we're going to go to 45, years. yes. It'd be right up in the okay. This is the lease agreement. Show page the lease or the sum of $45 well, received. Yeah, which is yeah, the, the issue one. I'm having with this is you're, you're doing a lease agreement. Maybe I'm just missing missing the policy. You're doing a lease agreement for rent in the hall for $45. Right. That's all this is. Yeah, I got it. But that says we're renting the hall for $45. Now we want to write a policy that will work what you're doing in the hall. So if you want well, to rent the hall, who are you renting to? Right. That's what you're going to cover in a policy. Who? Like you could say that you must be a resident to rent the hall. Right. Okay. One of, that would be one of the things that would be in. And, and you can't use it for any profit organization. Uh, well, for the right. forty-five dollars. But then when we add, if we wanted. But that's I've got a problem with this document then because if we're going to do a commercial rate and if we can do a commercial rate then this document's wrong because you're going to get the commercial user signing this document and right. he's going to wave it back in your face saying you're only charging me 45 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, let, let me go back. I think she's going to have an additional yeah, one. I should have asked you to have him speak for profit. So clarify okay. That's okay. But that's okay. I would think it'd be we'll another it. one, but okay. I don't know. We'll get it for profit. That's fine. We'll they would have to sign the, the one for profit. Well, then, right, maybe we can have a for profit lease agreement. Hopefully. So the question well, is for profit. But, you know, the, where we can waive the fees, though, which should be in the policy, is and we've always done that, and is for intergovernmental use. Mm -hmm. The sheriffs have their yearly meeting here or whatever, the, the deputies, the fire department's training the classes training here. here. Uh, you know, the, the ambulance crew, even though I guess technically that might be considered a for-profit crew, but it is, it is subsidized by the county, so uh, uh, they have meetings here. I'll have him cover all of the various, I mean, he'll have all of those set yeah, down and, for and us. Yeah, just mentioned, I'm, I don't know, did you copy him on that, I guess? And is this something, if, would this be starting in 2015 or something? Whenever we get this done. Okay. Okay. I, my big concern with rewriting it was protecting us from liability. And that's covered in this. Mm -hmm. So that was my favorite. Okay. Okay, um, bid for the dock work. Oh, I forgot to give that. Uh, the docks, I did submit a bid as a business owner of the township, and because of my position here on the board, I'd just as soon excuse myself for this line item. Herb okay. has graciously agreed to come out and tell me when you're finished with the. Okay, awesome. One has two. Um, just so, just so we're clear, I, I got lots of calls for these. Can I just wait? I got lots of calls for these bids. So just so we're clear, what we're looking at on these bids, we're looking at a, a rate per section, which would include, and we don't know how many sections. We didn't. I didn't have any of that information. Um, and we're looking for the sections, the rate per section will be the same for the buoys. And we're looking for an hourly rate for um, repairs, uh, whatever. Material, I told them we pay, we would pay materials, whatever they would be, but we would want, those are the only two things I ask people to get. So, just so we're comparing apples and oranges on these bids. There was a copy out on there. Yeah. Yes. Which I think, and also in the hall. Um, all right. These two are alike. This is from an Alfred West. And he called me and we talked quite extensively. What I'm going to do with this one because it's rather long, it's five pages, and the board can take it. He has complete the pictures and the whole thing. Uh, total for all five docks removed and stored is 5,995. Moby mats are an additional 370. This isn't, this won't work. <laughs> this is not going to work. How did he get that information? He got it from me. Yeah, but Rachel, when. The, the only thing I want to say about this. No, he went to each site. I, I know. told him where each site but, was, but and he job, went yeah, to but, each site. But that's not what we're bidding. Okay, we were bidding per dock, and okay, all right. So I can we tell need, you what he's what okay, he, he did sections need. too. That's all we need. We need a per we section. We want a section price. Okay. Yeah, I want to see his bid too. I, uh, the yes. section price on the. Um, He's got this yeah. marked as southern one. It isn't. It's um, it's what it is. He has the wrong one. But that's 110 per session. 110 per session. And what's his hourly rate? Um, and that's what. Uh, let's see. This is yeah. West. Yeah, it's on the last page, probably. Uh, Twenty-two dollars. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to the next. Okay. So that's Woodruff. I thought it was Alfred West. No, no, Woodrow Street. Woodrow Street. Oh, no, we... Did he get you different rates per section? Uh-huh. 
Oh, rather. Tacnaby Beach. Well, okay. Dock. Let's let's not look at that. Let's look at the rest of the bids and see when we'll come back. This will be a mess. Well, here I got an extra copy. Go for it. No, no, I I'm, I don't care about that. I want to see the rest of the bids because that's okay. not what we asked for. Mm -hmm. This is from Cottage Care. This is. Okay, this is probably more the way we ask for it. This is how uh, the Boy Scout dock set per section is $15 per section. The public beach dock section, $20 per section. The boat launch dock section is $20 per section. The buoys, $20 per each. Labor rate of hourly to fix the ongoing dock is 50 bucks. Problems, um, stanchions, let me spell that wrong. Boards and so forth, uh, two people, two hour, if they have to do that, is at $40 an hour. So that's cottage care. No, we won't go through that. Per section, the top and be beach, the boat dock is 25 per section, the swim dock is 25 per section, the cafe Nokia, uh, $20 per section, Boy Scout Park, $20 per section. And for some reason, he did not put an hourly rate on here. And that was in the paper. The hourly rate. He didn't. He didn't answer that question. Section each buoy is counted as a section. Thirty dollars per hour for labor and repairs. If two people are required for labor and repairs, the price will be sixty dollars per hour. This is a three-year bid with a guarantee of no price changes. We're going to take it off. off um, you got another one? No. This oh. is, you want to see more? Uh, yeah. Well, I got two from the same guy. Right. Yeah. I think we'll take it off um, line and come back with who gets it because this, for instance, if you look at the this guy, I, mean, I <coughs> if you eyeball this, although I haven't read this guy's, but he's by section $125, $130. Mm -hmm. $110. Mm -hmm. 